Hi, come and join me for today's video in which I'm going to talk all about how I sewed this swimsuit. Hi and welcome to my channel Sew a Media where I talk all about sewing a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. This week I am sharing a sew along about how I put the latest Tilly and the Buttons Coralie pattern together. So before I get into the sew along I thought I'd very quickly show you the pattern and talk through that. It is the Coralie Swimsuit by Tilly and the Buttons. It comes as a bikini or a swimsuit and you can make it with a high back or a low back. You can make it with a ruffle around the neck or not, just plain straps. And you can make it with little ruffles over the thigh area as well. So lots of different options in that swimsuit or bikini. And the bikini is also high waist or low waist. Now it comes in the full range of Tilly sizes, so from a UK size 6 to a size 34, which is great. And when I made this, I fall between two or three sizes usually on Tilly patterns. So for this one, I fell into a size 4 for my bust and my waist, and then between a size 5 and 6 for my hips. So what I decided to do with this pattern is I decided to sew a size 4 at the bust, and then I graded out to a five at the waist and a six at the hips, just to give me a little bit more of a nice line between the bust and the hips. Now on Tilly patterns, very helpfully, there are little lines to show you where the bust, the waist and the hips are. There's little notches for those three points. So it's quite straightforward to just mark on your pattern where you want your bust, waist and hips to fall in terms of the sizing and then to just draw a line between those three points. So that's what I did for my swimsuit pattern pieces before I cut out the fabric for my swimsuit. I just graded out that pattern. I wanted to make it with a ruffle, so I cut that obviously as a size four because that was the size for the top of the swimsuit. And then because I wanted to include the shelf bra, which is included in the pattern, I needed to make sure that that was graded the same way as the main front and back pieces. Now to sew the swimsuit, I'm going to use a beautiful swimwear fabric that I bought from Fabric Godmother. It has ladies on beach towels with beach umbrellas and it's just so bright and cheerful. Then for the ruffle, I bought this Eco Nile fabric from Sew Me Sunshine and I think that will go really nicely as the neck ruffle. Now when I was thinking about cutting these pieces out, you have got a binding that goes around the neckline and it becomes the straps. So I needed to decide whether I was going to cut it from the main fabric here and it would contrast against the ruffle or to cut the straps and the neck binding out in this darker blue colour which would then match the ruffle. Now I decided in the end, as you'll see in the video, that I would go with this darker blue for the binding and the straps just so that it didn't contrast too much against the ruffle. Then finally I decided to use this white swimwear lining. I just thought black might be too dark against here and I've sewn with power mesh before because I have got a nude power mesh but I didn't really love sewing with the power mesh. I do prefer to sew with and to wear just swimwear lining. just bought that in a white colour which I think will be fine with this main fabric. Now the pattern does include a shelf bra which you can add cups to if you would like to. I simply made the shelf bra as you'll see in the video. So enough chat, I will let you watch the video and see how I put it all together. I hope it's helpful. I've tried to include a few tips about sewing with my fabric along the way and I look forward to catching up with you and sharing my thoughts about the swimsuit at the end of the video. I started by cutting out the pattern pieces. I cut out two fronts, one from the fabric and one from swimwear lining fabric. Then I cut out the shelf bra piece before cutting out the back in the fabric and the lining as well as the neck binding and the front and back ruffle pieces. I put a new stretch needle on my sewing machine and got out my clear swimwear elastic. First I attached elastic to the shelf bra. I chose to use an overlocker for this taking great care to make sure I caught the elastic as well as the fabric in the overlocker. This gives a lovely neat finish to the bottom of the shelf bra and I also feel like there's less risk of it stretching out by doing it this way. Then I folded over that overlocked edge and took it to the machine to top stitch it into place. I took the shelf bra piece and lay it over the front lining piece, clipping the two together. I then took this to the machine to sew the shelf bra to the front lining piece. 
I placed the shelf bra over the lining. I clipped the front and the lining together and then took it to the machine to baste these two layers together. I didn't want to risk stretching out the fabric so I just used a long straight stitch. These two layers are going to be sewn together to the back later on using a stretch stitch. So for now I just basted them together using the longest straight stitch setting on my machine. Next it was time to sew the crotch seam of the front and back pieces. I started by finding the centre point of the front piece and the back piece and the back lining piece. Then I lay the front crotch piece on the back main crotch piece lining up those centre points. I then took the back lining piece and lined this up with the centre point as well. I then pinned all three layers together at the centre point. I pinned each corner of the crotch seam together. I then took it to the overlocker and very carefully sewed the crotch seam, making sure to keep the layers of fabric from bunching up underneath the overlocker foot. Now I lined up the side seams of the back piece, the front piece and the back lining piece. I took care to match the notches and to clip these into place. I used my overlocker to sew up the side seams. At this point I got quite excited because it really started looking a lot more like a swimsuit. The next step was to add elastic to the underarm seam. Again I chose to use my clear swimwear elastic. As before with the shelf bra, I chose to add the elastic using the overlocker. But a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine would work equally well here. I folded over the armhole edge, enclosing the elastic, and then top stitched that seam. Now it was time to turn to the ruffle and the neck binding. I pinned the short edges of the binding together. I clipped the back neckline ruffle pieces together. Then I clipped the back ruffle pieces to the front ruffle piece. I then went to the sewing machine to sew up all of these seams. To top stitch the seams on the ruffle pieces, I began by finger pressing the seam open. I then put some paper underneath my presser foot and lay the ruffle piece on top. This just gives the machine a little bit more purchase and stops the fabric from bunching up when you start to sew. Because the seam is just finger pressed open, I like to use my awl to ensure that the seam lies flat before I begin to sew. I also like to hold the thread tail at the back to make sure it doesn't get tangled up so there are no bird's nests when you pull the fabric off. Once the ruffle was sewn together, I added two lines of gathering stitches in a contrasting thread so I could pull them out easily later on. I then gathered the ruffle to fit the neckline binding. I clipped it into place and finally sewed the ruffle down to the neck binding at the machine. I removed the gathering threads, found the centre point of the front ruffle and attached that to the front of the swimsuit. I took it to my machine and sewed it into place. I sewed the back ruffle onto the back of the swimsuit in exactly the same way. I trimmed the little corners off the front of the swimsuit to line up with the neck binding piece. I then took my clear elastic, which I sewed around the entire neckline of the swimsuit.
Whilst the instructions suggest that you should fold the binding over and top stitch it into place before trimming it, I decided that I would like to finish it a different way. I folded the raw edge of the neck binding underneath before clipping it into place so that it covered the stitches underneath and lined up with the edge of the binding on the front of the swimsuit. I top stitched the neckline binding into place on my sewing machine. And we're nearly there! I basted the main fabric and the lining fabric together at the leg opening using a long straight stitch again. I used my overlocker to attach the elastic to the leg openings. I then folded the elastic over and top stitched the leg opening seam. And that's it! The swimsuit is complete! So I hope you enjoyed that sew along and I hope if you're going to sew a Coralie that some of that was helpful for you as you sew your swimsuit. I just thought I would show you my finished swimsuit. So you'll see I put the navy blue ruffle around the top here and then I decided to just finish off the legs like this with no ruffle at the hip. And yes, there it is. And you can see it looks fine. The grading line, it worked out beautifully. You still get that nice shape to the swimsuit, but it does grade out nicely over my waist and hips. I'm really, really pleased. I took the time to grade out the pattern. The fit is perfect, especially over my bottom area, which is where I often have trouble fitting swimsuits. So some comments about the swimsuit. I absolutely love the ruffle but I think next time I would actually make it slightly deeper, especially if I'm going to do it in a contrast fabric like this. I think it would probably do with being slightly deeper. I also had a bit of trouble putting this on and keeping the ruffles going across here. Somehow when I attached it the first time, I lost a bit of the ruffliness. So I just unpicked it and reinserted it again and that seemed to help. But the process of putting that ruffle in was very straightforward. Tilly's instructions, as ever, are fantastic. They are very thorough and detailed. There's lots of tips and tricks in there to help you along your way in terms of sewing that up. So the only other thing I would say is I used this swimwear elastic here, which is not the rubberized one, but it is a swimwear elastic. You don't usually stretch that too much as you are sewing it. And I'm always terrified that I'm going to stretch things out too much or make things too tight. So I don't think though I stretched out quite enough under the armholes and so they don't sit quite as close to my body as I would like. However, it's fine. This is a swimsuit for running around on the beach with my children this summer and as such it works fine but we always as sewists have critiques don't we of our own garments and that's certainly something that I would tweak next time is just stretch that elastic a little more as I go around that armhole opening just to make it sit a little closer to my body. So yes I absolutely love the deep back I think that's really beautiful especially with that navy ruffle <laughs> um, and yes I really like the coverage over the bottom it is quite a good full coverage and I'm sure though you could take a little off that if you preferred a slightly more cheeky look. I prefer more full coverage so that works really nicely for me. So yes overall a really enjoyable pattern to sew. It was relatively speedy as well even though I added this shelf bra on the inside that really didn't take too much extra time at all and again I just used the clear swimmer elastic for that this time but I think if I was to sew it next time I do have a cotton swimwear elastic that I've also got. I didn't use it on this project this time but actually I probably could have used with a little bit more elasticity around the bottom of the shelf bra uh, to make that again hug my body but what I didn't want was the elastic line showing through the swimsuit so again I'm fine with it. I don't need a hugely supportive swimsuit, I just wanted a little extra support at the front, which I've definitely got. I just think that's another thing that I would possibly tweak for next time. But in terms of the sizing, in terms of the fit, I'm really pleased with those. So this is definitely a pattern that I will be going back to again. I don't think I need another swimsuit for this summer, but I think looking ahead to next summer, I'll definitely be keeping my eye on swimwear fabrics and I would love to make another one next year with an even 
bigger, deeper, more ruffly ruffle. Another great pattern from the Tilly and the Buttons team. I am so thrilled to have this in my wardrobe for the summer and it's going to get a lot of wear, especially as we're enjoying such lovely warm weather this summer in England. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching the sew along and I hope you enjoyed it and got something out of it if you did watch right to the end. I so appreciate all of you who do watch and who leave me such lovely comments in the comment box below. I really appreciate all of the comments that you leave and it's so delightful to be able to read them and reply to them and have conversations with you down in the comments. If you did enjoy watching the video, I would so appreciate it if you would leave a like. And then if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, it would be so, so great to have you as a regular viewer. So do hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already so that you can become one of my regular viewers. So that's it from me for this week. I look forward to catching up with you next week in my next video. Until then, I hope you have a lovely week filled with lots of happy sewing and I shall see you in the next one. Goodbye.